Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers to give me the opportunity to present some of our work in data science for material science and engineering here on this conference. In addition, I would like to congratulate you to this digital format and getting things done in these rather complicated times. The mission of BAM, the German Federal Institute of Materials Research and Testing, is safety in technology and chemistry. A mission we are fulfilling for nearly 150 years throughout many historical turning points. Over these years, our mission provides numerous occasions to collect data from all kinds of materials and engineering cases, ranging from large scale tests, for example, in fire science, to fused sensor data from autonomous platforms, to long term structural health monitoring of infrastructure. Due to material informatics, our mission is not changing, but we will have to refocus. While today's paradigm for bringing new materials into the market is a long and linear process where BAM is often fulfilling our mission fairly late in the process, the new paradigm of tomorrow will be accelerated through data, science, simulation, artificial intelligence, machine learning and bring hopefully a much shorter innovation cycle to material science and engineering. So we have to position ourselves much earlier in the development cycle. Let me just mention that we often forget that an accelerated materials informatics needs also an accelerated material synthesis and characterization, which is at least as complex as the informatics part. To understand what data is all about in material science and engineering, let's have a look into an example from the past. On 17 December of 1903, the Wright brothers piloted the first powered airplane at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The airplane was powered by a revolutionary engine, the first aluminium alloy engine block. Its low weight kept the plane light and finally in the air. The alloy and the origin of its strength was not fully understood until 1919, 16 years later. The aluminium was supersaturated with copper, leading to a precipitation-hardened alloy, a method still used today. The core of the story still holds today. We are often data-rich in material science, but knowledge poor. So what's wrong with data and material science? Often the properties we are interested in are not as simple as a single melting point, but depend on the bulk processing part or, like in modern additive manufacturing, on the process and the geometry. Central to material design is properties, structure, processing and technological performance. However, no grand theory on how function emerges from assembling the right atoms in the right way exists today. Getting the data is therefore messy, that means it is often destructive, and relationships between actual products and the material properties are rare and heterogeneous. Ontologies can come to help to improve our understanding of a world too messy. They are representation of the types of entities, such as physical entities like cars, organisms, or information entities like databases and words, or cognitive 
and entities such as ideas, beliefs, speech acts in a given domain and the relation between them. We can use them to promote usage of heterogeneous data and exploit their stability of natural languages versus today's fast changes in software and hardware. Ontologies are like phones. They are valuable only to the degree that they are used and networked. While reference ontologies have a wider view, application ontologies are more often constructed for specific practical purposes. Ontologies were supposed to solve the problem of terminology. For example, the heterogeneity of databases and database languages. Instead, we observe an ontology bloating today. The linked open data cloud here in this picture is illustrating this problem. Biology is an excellent example starting out from a very fundamental ontology, the BOF. What we need is exactly this, one ontology to rule them all. Well, we are not all ontologists and tend to get lost on our way, but it is important to invest in shared vocabulary, use and promote standards and stay with basic ontologies. If you look into safety, like we do at BAM, you will have to look out for a certain branch of capabilities, not functions in an ontology. For example, a car has safety features, but that capability is not defined as a function in the ontology. Now, how do we acquire our data with ontologies? We must build them once as dictionaries for understanding and then we can use them to mine our processes and can use these templates multiple times for execution. That means collecting data with metadata. Together with Fraunhofer materials, BAM has started a project to bridge domain and communities in anal analysis, testing and modeling in the next years. For different materials, we will cover subjects ranging from testing to thermodynamics and finite element implementation. Now let's have a deep dive into an example from BAM. Weldex is a fair project for welding. Welding is a discipline where no formats for data are known today and which is rather a traditional discipline which is certainly not data driven today. Welding ranges from the laboratory to the very large and unique structures you can see here from offshore constructions. Data sets are rare and messy, incomplete often. The challenges are manifold, ranging from variable geometry tolerance limits to different processing ways such as manually or robotic welding. You have a huge amount of ancient intrinsic knowledge and a variable validity of process data. We at BAM do acquisitions through high-speed imaging, providing a lot of inc information in combination with data fusion to get spatial and temporal unambitious data. Component properties, that means the quality of the welding seam, is related to metallurgy, geometry and other NDT-derived parameters. The video here shown in the next slide is showing the turning of a torch which is needed to do the joints 
in this rather simple example, without taking a video and positioning the data could not use beyond this simple experiment. After the welding is done, the robotic arm is again scanning the welding seam for the geometry. With this data from scanning the path of the welding, we can run our digital twin and simulate the whole process. This would not be possible without the path-dependent data. Overall, a lot of other multidimensional data and methods, as well as interdisciplinary knowledge, is needed for this ontology and the metadata in the long run. Weldex will extend in the future with these types of data and ontology as well standard setting in different application areas of welding. Further, we need quality measures for historic data and bootstrapping experiments with simulations to increase our data for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Let me close with a glimpse into the future what an integration of materials, data and engineering processes could mean. While design and construction is gone completely digital and the mesoscale level of materials can be simulated with advanced FEM methods, we still have a rather conservative outlook on materials properties and microstructure. Although we know about the importance of microstructure from processing of materials, we tend to ignore it. Let me explain what that means. On the picture, you see the gradient of mechanical properties and the associate property distribution within specific locations of this fork component. Traditional material definitions would assume all locations should have the same property, so all test values would be combined and statistically analyzed as one population, resulting in a very low minimum property capability. For the future, this has to change. Location-specific properties based on past-dependent evolution of structure is needed as well as multi-scale modeling and data. In this way, we will be able to identify critical properties and locations within components that will require inspections for integrated local life capabilities. With this understanding of the component, we will know where to place sensors in critical parts and perform NDT methods. So our vision is to have a representative volume element which is tied to the distribution of all microstructure features included. Material is then no longer only defined by its use for a specific application. To make this come real with many other partners, we have started this national research in initiative in Germany to develop an understanding for data, processes and ontologies. Instead of a summary, let me point out the merit of materials informatics will be judged by the contribution it will have to speed up the innovation cycle for new materials in a sustainable world. Thank you for your attention.